Hello and welcome back to the course on deep learning. Today we're talking about the neuron, which is the basic building block of artificial neural networks. So let's get started. Previously we saw an image which looked like this. And these are actual real life neurons, uh, which have been smeared onto a glass and uh, colored a little bit and they are observed through a microscope. So this is what they look like, as you can see, uh, quite an interesting structure, a uh, body and then lots of different um, tails, kind of branches coming out of them. And uh, this is very interesting, but the question is, how can we recreate that in a machine? Because we really need to recreate it in a machine since the whole purpose of deep learning is to mimic how the human brain works um, in the hope that by doing so, we're going to create something amazing. We're going to create an amazing infrastructure for machines to be able to learn. And why do we hope for that? Well, because the human brain is... Uh, well, just happens to be one of the most powerful learning learning tools in on the planet or like learning mechanisms on the planet. And we just hope that if we recreate that, we'll have something as awesome as that. So our challenge right now, our very first step to creating artificial neural networks is to recreate a neuron. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's have a closer look at what it actually is. This image was first created by uh, Spanish neuroscientist Santiago Ramón uh, y Callal uh, in 1899. And what he did was he dyed neurons in actual brain tissue and looked at them under a microscope. And while he was looking at them, he actually drew what he saw. And this is what he saw. He saw two neurons or two large neurons over there at the top, uh, which had all these uh, branches coming out of them towards uh, their top parts and then the, each one of them had this rod um, or like thread coming out towards the bottom, very long one. And uh, yeah, so that's what he saw. And now, you know, technology has advanced quite a lot and we uh, have seen neurons much closer in more detail. And now we can actually draw uh, what it looks like diagrammatically. So let's have a look at that. Here's a neuron. This is what it looks like. Very similar to what uh, Santiago uh, Ramon drew over here. And here in this neuron, what we can see is that it's got a body. Well, that's the main part of the neuron. And then it's got some branches at the top, which are called dendrites. And it's also got an axon, which is that long tail of the neuron. And so what are these dendrites when, for and what's the axon for? Well, um, the key point to understand here is that neurons by themselves are uh, pretty much useless. It's like, it's like an ant, right? An ant on its own can't do much. Like five ants together maybe they can pick something up but again they 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 don't they can't build an ant hill they can't establish a colony they can't uh, work together as a as a huge organism but at the same time when you have lots and lots of ants like you have an, a million ants they can build a whole colony they can build an ant hill same thing with neurons by itself it's not that strong but when you have lots of neurons together they work together to to do magic. And uh, how do they work together? That's the question. Well, that's what the dendrites and the axon are for. So the dendrites are kind of like the receivers of the signal for the neuron, and the axon is the transmitter of the signal for the neuron. And here's an image of um, how it all works conceptually. So at the top, you've got a neuron, and you can see that its dendrites are connected to axons of other neurons that are like even further away above it. And then the signal from this neuron travels down its axon and connects or passes on to the dendrites of the next neuron. And that's how they're connected. And uh, in that small image over there, you can see that um, the axon doesn't actually touch the dendrite. A lot, of, <laughs> a lot of machine learning or like a few machine learning scientists uh, are very adamant about that the fact that it doesn't touch. Uh, it uh, like the it doesn't touch. It has been proven that there is no physical connection there. But the point that we're interested in is that that connection between them, that uh, the whole concept of the signal being passed, that's called a synapse. You can see over there in that little image um, that uh, figure bracket is a synapse, and that's the term we're going to be using. So instead of calling our artificial neurons, you know, the lines that we're going to have or the connectors for artificial neurons, we're not going to be calling them axons or dendrites uh, because then it, the question is whose connection is this? Is it that neurons or is it this neurons? We just call them, we're just going to call them synapses. And that's kind of just uh, answers all questions right away. That's just basically where the signal is passed. doesn't matter who that element belongs to. That's just a representation of the signal being passed and we'll see that just now. So basically that's how a neuron works. And uh, yeah, so let's move on to how we're going to 
represent neurons or how we're going to create neurons in um, machines. So we're moving away, <laughs> now we're moving away from neuroscience and moving into uh, technology. And here we go. So here's our neuron, also sometimes called the node. Uh, the neuron gets some input signals and it has an output signal. So dendrites and axons, remember? But again, we're gonna call all these synapses. Um, then the, um, uh, these input signals, we're gonna represent them with other neurons as well. So in this specific case, you can see that this neuron, this green neuron, is getting signals from yellow neurons. And in this course, we're going to try and stick to um, a certain color coding regime where yellow means an input layer. So basically, all of the neurons that are on the outer layer or in the first front of um, where the signal is coming in. And by signal, it might be like a bit of an over overkill to call this a signal. It's just basically input value. So so you know how even like in a simple linear regression, you have input values and then you have a, uh, a predicted value. Same thing here. So you have input values and there they are, the yellow ones. And then on the right, you'll see just now, it'll be red, it'll be the output value. Um, the, the thing that I wanted to point out here is that in this specific example, we're looking at a neuron which is getting its signals from uh, the input layer neurons. So they're also neurons, but they're their input layer neurons. Um, sometimes you'll have neurons which get their signal from other hidden layer neurons, so from other green neurons, and the concept is going to be exactly the same. And just in this case, we, uh, for simplicity's sake, we're portraying this example. And in terms of the input layer, the way to think about it is, um, in, the, in the analogy of the human brain, the input layer is your senses, right? So whatever you can see, hear, feel, um, touch, or smell. And of course, it's like there's, there's a lot of things you can see. There's a lot of information coming in. But those are your, that's what your brain is limited to. It's pretty much a, um, like, <laughs> it's pretty much lives in a box made out of bones. And it's only just, it's, it's a mind blowing concept to think about that your brain is just locked in a black box. And the only thing, like, it can't see, it can't hear. The only thing it's getting is electrical impulses coming from these. Um, organs that you have, which are called your ears, nose, eyes, um, you know, your sense of touch and whatever, and your, and your, and your taste, right? So it's just getting signals, but it basically lives in this dark black box and it's making, um, making sense of the world through your senses. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, and so, yeah, so you have these uh, inputs that are coming in in the terms of human brain, those are your five senses. And uh, in terms of machine learning or deep learning, that is basically your uh, input values. So your independent variables, and we'll get that to in a second. So um, your input values, they um, the signal is passed through synapses to your neuron, and then your neuron has an output value that it passes further on down the chain. In this specific case, in terms of color coding, again, yellow means input layer. So we're kind of simplifying everything here. We're saying we're only gonna have like the input layer, then we're gonna have one hidden layer with the green, uh, which is the hidden layer, and then we're gonna have right, the output layer right away. So just so that we can get used to these colors for now. Um, so there we go, that's uh, the basic structure. So now let's look in a bit more detail at these different elements that we have. So we've got the input layer. And what do we have here? Well, we have uh, these inputs, which are in fact independent variables. So independent variable one, independent variable two, independent variable m. And the important thing to remember here is that these independent variables are all for one single observation. So think of it as just one row in your database, one observation. You just take all of the independent variables, uh, you know, maybe it's a uh, the age of the person, their the amount of money in the bank account, and then how how do they drive or, or walk to work? What method of transportation do they use? So, but that's all descriptors of one specific person that you are either you're training your model on uh, or you're performing some prediction on. Um, and uh, the other thing you need to know about these variables is that you need to standardize them. So you need to either standardize them, which means uh, make sure that they have a mean of zero and a variance of one, or you can also sometimes, and Hadlan will point out these situations in a bit more um, detail, perhaps in uh, the practical tutorials you might come across these, sometimes you might want to not standardize, you might want to normalize them, meaning that instead of uh, making sure the mean and mean is zero and variance is one, you just take... Uh, you know, you subtract the minimum value and then you divide by the maximum minus minimum, so by the range of your values, and therefore you get uh, values between zero and one. And uh, it depends on the scenario, you might want to do one or the other, but basically you want all of these variables to be 
quite similar in the in about the same range of values. And why why is that? Well, um, all of these values are going to go into a neural network where, as we'll see just now, they'll be added up and and uh, multiplied by weights, added up, and so on. And just going to be just going to be easier for the neural network to process them uh, if they're all about the same. And uh, and in fact, you know that that's that's just how it is going to be able to work properly. And if you want to read more about uh, standardization, normalization, and other things that you can do with your input variables, uh, a good additional reading um, paper is called Efficient Backprop by Jan LeCun, uh, 1998. Uh, the link's over there. So Jan LeCun, we're actually going to talk more about uh, this uh, phenomenal person in the space of deep learning in um, the part of the course where we're talking about convolutional neural networks, and you'll you'll see that this is definitely a person who knows what he's talking about. He's a close friend of um, Jeffrey Hinton, who we've already seen, um, who we've already mentioned. So uh, in this paper, you'll learn more about standardization and normalization, but also you can pick up lots of other different tips and tricks, and it'll be a good uh, good source for additional reading as you go through this course. So so yeah, check it out if you're interested in some additional reading. Um, there we go. So that's what we need to do with the variables. And here we've got the output value. So what can our output value be? Well, we've got a couple of options. Output value can be, it can be continuous, like for instance, price. It can be binary, for instance, a person will exit or will stay, or it can be a categorical variable. And um, if it's a categorical variable, the important thing to remember here is that in that case, your output value won't be just one, it'll be several output values because these will be your dummy variables, which will be representing your categories. And that's just, just how it works. And uh, just important to remember that in that case, that's how you're going to be getting your categories out of the uh, artificial neural network. Um, but let's go back to a simple case of one output value. And now let's, uh, one more point or kind of like another, the point that we've already made, I just wanted to reiterate this point. Um, on the left, you've got a single observation so one row from your data set, and on the right you have a single observation as well, and that is the same observation. So important to remember that like whatever inputs you're putting in, that's for one row, and then the output you get, that is for that same exact row. Or if you're training your uh, neural network, then you know, you're know you putting the inputs in for that one row, you're putting the output in for that one row. So like if you want to simplify the complexity, think of it as a uh, like a simple linear regression or a multivariate linear regression. So you're putting in your... Uh, values, you have your output. There's, there's like, there's no question about it when we're talking about uh, things like regression because we're so used to it. Same thing here. It's, it's nothing too complex. We're just putting in values. We're getting output. But just remember that every time it's one row you're dealing with, so you don't get confused and start putting in like uh, thinking that these are different, uh, different rows that you're putting into your um, artificial neural network or something. This is all just values in that one row. So different observation, different characteristics of or attributes relating to that one observation every single time. Um, okay, so next thing that we want to talk about here is the, or are the synapses, is the synapses. Um, here we've got synapses and they all actually get assigned weights. Uh, weights, we're going to talk uh, more about weights further down, but in short, weights are crucial to artificial neural networks functioning because weights are how neural networks learn. By adjusting the weights, the neural network decides in every single case what sing signal is important, what signal is not important to a certain neuron, what signal gets passed along and what signal doesn't get passed along, or to what strength, to what extent signals get passed along. So weights are crucial, they are and they are the things that get adjusted through the process of learning. Like when, when you're training an artificial neural network, you're basically adjusting all of the weights in all of the synapses across this whole neural network. And, and that's where gradient descent and um, backpropagation come into play. And those are concepts that we'll also discuss. Um, so basically those are the weights. That's all we need to know for now. And uh, here we've got the neuron. So signals go into the neuron. And what happens in the neuron? So this is... The, the interesting part, like we're talking about the neuron today, what happens inside the neuron? So a few things happen. First thing, and the first step is that all of these values that it's getting get added up. So it uh, takes the added, uh, so the weighted sum of all of the uh, input values that it's getting. Very simple, right? It's very, very straightforward. Just add up, multiply by the weight, add them up. 
Um, and then it applies an activation function. Now we're going to talk more about activation functions further down, but it's basically a function that is assigned to this neuron or to this whole layer. And uh, it is applied to this weighted uh, sum. And then from that, the neuron understands um, if it needs to pass on a signal, if it, like the, that's the signal that it passes on that uh, the function applied to um, the weighted sum. But basically, depending on that function, the neuron will either pass on a signal or it won't pass the signal on. And that's exactly what happened here in step three. Um, the neuron passes on that signal to the next neuron down the line. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about in the next tutorial because it is quite an important topic. We want to delve deeper into uh, the activation function. But hopefully for now, everything is should be pretty clear how you know, you've got input values, you've got weights, you've got the synapses, you've got something that you know, happens in the neuron, you've got the weighted sum and then an activation function is applied and then that is passed down the line and that is just repeated throughout the whole neural network on and on and on and on. Uh, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of times, depending on how big, how many neurons you have, how many synapses you have in your neural network. Now make sure to check out these videos on the right or the full course in the description to continue your learning. And I look forward to seeing you there.